Okay, we're getting ready for a wine dinner here, and it's right after Thanksgiving. I'm here with Tony Verdoni, the professor, professor of all things, especially Italian wine, right? I'll go along with that. You'll go along with that? Yeah. Um, you know, Tony, I love the holidays, and I think it's important for us to tell our viewers about the Italian holiday tradition and about how they put together a meal. Yeah. And uh, we've been in Italy during the holidays, and it's truly outstanding event. You know, every every evening is an event. That's true. You know, and they actually do put together a meal. It's not just uh, a buffet. No, no. You know, that's absolutely. the Russian style. They used to call that. Put all the food out and let the people take what they want. But they don't do that. Really. Yeah, this is like an escalating drama or a beautiful opera. Every course of food, every wine is selected to escalate the evening to get the, the mouth sal salivating, to, to make it better, to make the next course better, and then it slowly crescendos down to a finish. And it's kind of like, it's, it's like a beautiful movie or an opera, you know? It sure is. It's quite and, a production. And, you know, the Italians add courses. They have a lot of courses, you know? Most places, it's antipasti, primi, sugundi, formaggi, dolci, but they could add other courses and they make names up. I think they just like to drink a lot of wine. I think they like to drink a lot of different wines because they usually have a different wine with each course. And that's what we're going to do today. It's a daunting task to pair wines and food and people get, you know, they get nervous, but you don't have to get nervous. We're going to give them some simple go-to tips to pair with the typical Italian meal. So antipasti, what might that include? Well. Uh, one of the big things to include are sort of the cured meats, which Italy's very famous for, prosciutto, brezzaola, uh, put some cheeses out there also, some salamis, and uh, for a wine, uh, use something like a Prosecco. Prosecco goes very well with appetizers. Yeah. Uh, they're easy to prepare. You can pre prepare those appetizers in advance. Guests come at different times. So it's very informal, it's a nice way to start. Kind of gets the palate going. Absolutely. And if you didn't have a Prosecco, you could use a Suave from the Veneto, yeah. a crisp Chardonnay from Val d'Aosta, yeah. any of those non-oaked, yeah. very acidic, crisp, fresh wines. Yeah, yeah. a couple of wines that just come to mind. First of all, Friulano, which is made from the Tokai grape. It's an area where they produce prosciutto, San Daniele, and Tokai Friulano, white wine, goes very well with prosciutto. You could even use a fizzy red like Lambrusco, uh, authentic Lambrusco, which cuts into the fattiness of those meats and uh, really provides a good foil for them. Yeah, and we were just in Alto Adige and we had some that's speck, right. and what did they serve us? That's, that's right. Uh, they, with with, with uh, speck, they gave us uh, they gave us some reds and whites, yeah. as a matter of fact. They gave but, us reds based on Schiava, and they gave us whites. Uh, Silvana. Uh, Silvana, uh, other whites as well. Right. You can't miss. You and can't you know miss. what's interesting about Italy, and take this into mind, and kind of use it as uh, your guide to make it your own. Because in Italy, you've told me, and now I've found the proof, that every 10 kilometers, Italy changes. True. The bread you have in one little town is a little bit different, different in the next town. That's right. And the same thing's true for salami and wine and cheeses, right? That's absolutely right. Different varietals, different wines from different special places, 10 kilometers apart. Right, so it's very localized. Very so local. do the local stuff, go to the fresh market and make a nice antipasto, pick a nice white wine, a champagne, a prosecco, or a nice fresh white wine that's unoaked. You can ask your local liquor store or go online or you know, do a little research, do a little Google and you'll find the white wine for that. The next wine I say, we have to add a little salinity, a little minerality, and the Italians call that next course Primi. And it might include risotto, polenta, a pasta dish. And again, it's territorial. Make it your own. That's Go right. for it. Get in the spirit, you know? That's right. That's right. You almost can't miss. You know, it's a primo, but it's not a primo because we already had anti-primo. We had right. anti-pasta. Correct. But primo means first course. And uh, the Italians don't eat pasta as an entree. They have it as a first course. They right. have a secondo after that. And the, what I love about pasta is you can prepare it so many different ways. And there are so many different shapes which are all affiliated with specific geographic areas. Right. Like uh, uh, Orecchia, 
are from uh, Puglia, right. uh, Fusili are from around the Naples area. And the sauces that you pick make it even more wonderful because right. you can have almost any sauce, especially around Christmas Eve, you might want to have seafood sauce. Absolutely. Yeah, and you could go with a nice mineral laden white. Right. With that. And like I could suggest, we just were up in Alto Adige, we had the Turlon Pino Bianco, great minerality, nice acidity, a little oak yeah. aging. You might go to Friuli to a Yerman Dreams, an oak aged Chardonnay. Bigger in right, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Or if we're going for red, a Barbera from Odero or one of the great producers, yeah. or even a Dolcetto yeah. at this point, depending. And for me, I would do a little risotto with grilled porcini, a little really nice olive oil. And I think I would go red, and I might open a beautiful bottle of Odero Barbera yeah. in honor of Maria Cristina and my good friend oh, Isabella. Good. You could even do a Dolcetto, something like uh, Vietti's Dolcetto, Dolcetto d'Alba, or Dolcetto di Doliani, which is a newly discovered area for very good Dolcetto. Yes, I agree. And, and those are all, all awesome choices. And next comes the main course. They call it Segundi, mm -hmm. the second course. Uh, and they might eat a course in between and they come up with a name. The Segundi, I go, I call it the three B's. It's got to be a Barolo, a Brunello, or a Bulgari Rosso. It's got to be a little bit older, it's got to have some age, it's got to have some depth, it's got to be complex, it's got to be able to go with those dishes like Osoboco, Bisteca, Salsiccia, Brissato. Those are the things that we want to eat yeah. with those kind of wines. Those are killer bees, by the way. Those the are wines bees. that develop in the bottle. If you're fortunate to have one that's seven years old or ten years old, that makes it even better. Uh, but those are really highlight wines because the secondo is the highlight of the meal now. You're at the climax yeah, we're, at we're, this point. We're right, we're right there now. Yeah. And you know what I say? When you're serving that wine and you're having that holiday meal, let everybody stop, take a sip of the wine, take a taste of that mouth-watering food that you made, and see how much better everything yeah. tastes yeah. when you have Italian wine and food. They go together, and it's important to tell your guests that because it really makes an impact. Yeah. You know what's interesting, too? You were talking about courses. Uh, I never realized this because I was raised the way we're talking. We always used to apportion meals. But a lot of my friends, when they went to Italy for the first time, they said, hey, you know, they don't have salads first. They have salads toward the end of the right. meal. And of course, no wine I would recommend with a salad. Right. But for mouth cleansing, good acidity, and a nice salad, uh, it comes later in the meal. It doesn't come as the first thing in the meal. Yeah. And you know what those big bees I like to put on the show? Lights, camera, action. Decant that baby. Show them some action. Because when the camera and the lights and the action's yeah. rolling, Everything tastes better. Yeah. It's the holidays. Get in the spirit. I mean, put the Santa hat on if you have to. I don't care. That's right. Come on. It's a show. To have fun. But, but how do you follow that act? What do you do at that point? How do you follow that act? I have a few ideas. Well, well, I, well we're going to get sure there. But so. I think <laughs> after we got through that, I think we go to the cheese course. Yeah. And with the cheese course, it's got to be something soothe soothing kind of a wine of meditation. Something that's a little out there that might be a little too much for food but can stand the cheese. And I don't drink a lot of this wine. I take a few yeah. sips. You know, if we have eight people at a table, a bottle is the appropriate amount. So we have a small glass of that. And I might pick an Amarone from the Veneto. Or I might pick a Lagrine from Alto Adige. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe a Fiano, a white wine from Sicily that's a little sweet yeah. But finishes dry. Yeah. It has that sweet yeah. fruitiness in your mouth. Some, something you similar to an Amarone, a Sforzato from Lombardy, uh, very close to the border of uh, Switzerland. It's made with dried grapes, dried Nebbiolo grapes, just as the Amarone is made with dried local grapes, mostly Corvina, uh, Corvina Veronese grapes. And these are wines of meditation. These are wines you can drink on, on their own. And it cut into the fat of the cheeses. It, and Italy is great for cheeses, by the way. You know, we think of France for cheeses, but Italy has wonderful cheeses, local cheeses, Asiago, Taleggio, Parmigiano Reggiano, Grana Padana, hundreds of others. So there's a bevy of cheeses in there. Right. And I think the final chapter is the dessert wine. It's enchanting, it's the last thing we remember. It's usually sweet, um, and again, it's small sips, and with that dessert, a piece of chocolate, or a, even a biscotti, a cookie, 
yeah. that that sweet and all of the regions make these sweet dessert rinds. You know, yes. you have ricciotto and passito and from all over the 20 regions of Italy. And there's some some great great sweet wines, and they're usually in a smaller format bottle. Why? Because we drink much less of that. Yeah. And yeah. it's a really nice way to end a meal. It, it really is. And uh, again, the, uh, the sweet wines are from all over Italy. They're both red and white. There are a lot of choices. I'll throw just an oddball at you, which would be pretty difficult to find, but it's worth a search if you can. With chocolate, I love Barolo Chinato. Which you is made me a, taste that. Yeah. It's a Barolo wine that has quinine in it. So it's almost like a digestive. So, and it would be very interesting with chocolate. It was very, it was very interesting, and I think Prestomatic was there at that wonderful uh, dinner that we had, our cameraman and yep, uh, yep, editor, yep. and he had some Barolo Quinato with Barolo us, right? Quinato. Yep. And you know what the last thing is? It's very important. I figured it all out today. I figured out, as I was writing this little thing up for you and I tonight, I figured out Italy's economics, and I figured out my problems all in one. <laughs> My big problem is when I get to a meal like this, and most Italians are the same way, you should bring your pillow to dinner because after that it's nap time. Take a nap. And most Italians after a meal like that do that's, take, a, take a nap. And it's also, I think, the reason for the economic problems in Italy is nobody really yeah. wants to work. They'd rather eat and drink and take a little nap wow. and they don't want to go back to work. So, so I think the Italian meal leads to all of these yeah. things. We should uh, contact CNBC. You can get on TV and tell the world. Uh, maybe I should be the prime minister of Italy. You may be. We don't know. Help. Who knows? Oh. But you know, after the nap, you wake up and play cards and you have sandwiches. Right. Of course. You start all over again. Start again. Well, this is from Vic and Verdoni. We're, we're wishing you a happy holiday and hope you like our little holiday planning tips. And we'll see you real soon. Vic Rallo and the professor, Tony Verdoni.